This is DGIS News Hour for Monday, November 29. I am Leslie Ann Johnson. In the headlines, Finance Minister reiterates government's commitment to the growth and expansion of the economy. Police officers recognized for their dedication to duty and traffic study to begin on Tuesday. In the region, calls for Haiti's just ended presidential elections to be scrapped. Those were the headlines. Details are next. Welcome to the Come Home Folk Festival, December 3rd to 5th, Low Town Cetez, The Folk City. A weekend of Grenadian food, music, games, and more. Friday, December 3rd, experience an evening of traditional drama by renowned actors from Privilege Theatre, Hermitage Drama Group, Robert White, and others. Come dressed in your outfits from yesteryear on Saturday 4th for a fun day of activities with traditional games and local foods. From 6.30 p.m., we take you back in times with a musical night featuring Black Wizard, Lady Sinti, Bayside Boys, Scaramouch, Aikuma, Pano Sia, and much more, all backed by the RGPF Band. The curtains come down on Sunday, December 5th, with an explosion of Grenadian culture. Performances from the National Folk Group, Spice Island Youthquake, Vinue La Grenade Dancers, Big Drum Dancers from Karakou, River Sally Folk Group, Birch Grove Lancers, Tivoli Drummers, and so much more. Remember, it's the Kamahorn Folk Festival, December 3rd to 5th, Lotang Satez, the Folk City, a new and dynamic way to experience our folklore. For more info, contact the Division of Culture on 440-2255 or find them on Facebook at Grenadian Culture. Sakitan Palilut, who had tell others. Finance Minister Nazim Burke says government is committed to growing and expanding the national economy while continuing to focus on poverty reduction. But he says the private sector must be fully on board in this drive. Minister Burke was addressing the start of a BNTF CDB small contractors and artisans workshop on Monday, said as Grenada and other small island states continue to feel the effects of the world financial crisis, there is a need to undertake the necessary structural changes. Part of these changes, he added, has to do with restructuring the national economy. The role of government and the object of countries and nations and leaders cannot be simply to manage poverty. Our business is not to manage poverty. Our business is to get rid of poverty. And the way to do that, or in order to do that, I should say, we must get the economy growing. We must invest today to be able to see the rewards tomorrow. If we do not grow, we will not increase the size of the pie. If we do not increase the size of the pie, we will not be able to give every person in Grenada a larger slice of the pie. And therefore, we must concentrate, while ensuring that people do not descend into poverty, we must concentrate on growing and expanding the national economy, growing and expanding the gross domestic product of our economy. We recognize that this can be done not by government, but by private enterprise. We make the point several times before and we repeat today, the private sector ought to be seen as and must be regarded as the engine of growth in our society. The role of government is not to create jobs for everybody. The role of government is to create the conditions that will allow private business and private enterprise to thrive. And that is why we've given so much attention to ensuring that we improve the business culture in our country, 
That is why we've given so much attention to reforms so that we can make it easier to do business in our country. The finance minister adds that small businesses continue to play a critical role in the economy and recognizing their importance, a small business development policy has already been developed and will soon be tabled in parliament. Government is now working to develop a small business development act, the idea being to continue providing incentives for businesses to grow through a business support development regime. Their contribution to the national economy is over 40%. And we believe that we ought to continue to support these enterprises. We must support them because we recognize the contribution that they make. We must support them because we recognize the opportunity that they provide for wealth creation. We must always remember that people do not get rich by working by, by in a job as an employee. There are different ways to get rich. One of them is to set up a business which is successful. Perhaps the most certain way is to set up a business which is successful. Of course, you can win the lottery. Of course, you can inherit some money from your family. But people do not get rich just working for somebody else all the days of their lives. You get a paycheck and you pay your bills. If you really want to create wealth, if you really want to afford yourself an opportunity to be wealthy, you have to set up a business. You have to do something enterprising. And that is why we think that your presence here today is so important, not just for yourselves as you seek to improve your own capacities, but for the country as a whole. Three police officers were recognized for their length of service and dedication to their job during the police awards ceremony on Saturday night. The occasion was also used to award other officers who have given exemplary service. Abigail McIntyre has more. The retirees were Inspector Godwin Holston, who served from 1970 to 1980 and from 1983 to February 2010. Corporal Anselm Lewis, who gave up 26 years in the force from 1984 to 2010, also received a recognition for his service to the force. Woman Corporal Gloria Charles was the third officer to receive her award for 36 years in the force. Over 50 other officers were awarded for their outstanding performances on duty during the year. Eight major awards were given to various departments and individuals for exceptional service as well. Constable Jonathan Fortune received the award for bravery, Diane Dumont for Police Woman of the Year, and Shea Charles as Policeman for the Year. Prime Minister and Minister for National Security Tillman Thomas commended the force for their good work during the year. The police is really a, a civilian in uniform, and you need to have good rapport with the community so you could get the support of the community in fighting uh, criminal activities. Therefore, you ought to have good relations. You have to be courteous and, and relate to the community in a humane and friendly manner. Sometimes people complain about the hostility with police, bus drivers and others complain how you know, discrimination we have to find ways and means of you know, building a good relationship and try to be fair and honest in uh, our dealings because our role in security is, is significant. We cannot underestimate the, the, the importance of uh, security and we should try to be fair in our dealings. As Minister responsible for national security, the more e Mr. Thomas says the onus is on the force to ensure a safe environment, not just for locals, but for the well-being of the state, and so encourage them to keep up the good work. Because of our dependence on tourism to a certain extent, we need to ensure that we minimize criminal activities in the society, or those who violate the law, that we prosecute them. And we need to ensure that farmers who grow their crops that it should be given an opportunity to harvest those crops. And this is an area where you get the most complaints. You know, and it is really sad for a farmer to go out and cultivate his crops. And when you're ready to harvest, you go, everything gone. I, I believe we have to come up with a strategy. You know, they have several organizations. They had the um, Farm Watch. You had different groupings to see how we could combat pre-deal larceny. But we have not been 
totally successful. There may be some success, but we need to really bring those perpetrators before the law. Chairman of the Police Welfare Association, Sergeant Linford Cummins, says the force have started a retirement program for officers who are on their way out of the service. This, he says, will assist them in having a smooth transition. As we recognize our officers who have retired today, the association is in the process of putting a program preparing officers for retirement. And this will restructure their lives in the civilian world. This is an opportune time to commend the members of my team who put this program together and the confidence they place in me as chairman of the Welfare Association. I want to thank the Commissioner of Police, especially Senior Officers Superintendent Martin, who was, who was the one who always lobbying it to continue this program, this event, sorry. I am Abigail McIntyre for the GIS News Hour. Local small contractors and artisans are participating in an intensive one-week computerized job estimation tool program that will give them a platform from which they can launch a competitive bid for a job. The workshop is being facilitated by Barbadian consultants who are teaching techniques that will help small contractors to see returns in their business. CDB Investment Officer Kenneth Harvey says the end result is the development of better business people who will be able to take control of their financial future. You do what your business instructs you to do, and you apply the techniques we will teach you in this workshop, you can be confident that from this point on, unless there's a disaster, you will not undertake any job where you find you have to go and borrow money to finish the job or pull money from another client's work to finish the job. You will know precisely what the job will cost you to do, what leeway you will have, and what profit you will expect to make from that job. And most importantly, you will be able to break any job, whether it's building this conference facility, into very finite, very specific tasks. And for each task, you will know precisely what it will cost you, what your business requires you to apply to that task, and what you can charge on this task and what you expect to make. In other words, ladies and gentlemen, you will be in total control of the financial and technical outcome of the job. The program started in 2006 to equip small contractors and others with the management skills they were lacking. Mr. Harvey says there are other available opportunities for interested persons on completion of this week's exercise. After these four years, you can apply to the bank's CTCS, that is the Caribbean Development Bank CTCS Network Program, for any assistance, any technical assistance, any technical know-how you need specifically for your business, whether it's to give you on an individual basis or your staff additional training in some specific aspect of your business. For example, if you're a welder and you want to go from an ordinary welder to a certified welder, although we cannot certify you, we can prepare you to the extent that you can go and do some certification. If you're a contractor and you're not comfortable reading a steel drawing, a plan, we can help you with that. We can help you in any specific area that you feel would improve your ability to manage your job, manage your personnel, and be more profitable in your endeavors. To access that information, or that assistance, you don't need the BNTF, you don't need the ministry. You just take up the phone or send us an email or write us indicating that I need CTCS assistance and I need it yesterday. And once you give us your contact, we will contact you we will walk through the paces with you. We will discuss your needs. And when we have, between you and the CTCF, come to a common way forward, we will proceed to assist you with the technical assistance you need. The workshop at the Koyaba Beach Resort runs until Thursday. Learning to write for print media is the best way to start your journalism career. The view of the president of the Media Workers Association of Grenada, Royal Titus. He was addressing journalists at the start of a two-week workshop in writing for print and online media. It's sponsored by the United Nations Education, Scientific and Cultural Organization, UNESCO. Details from Abigail McIntyre. Over the next two weeks, journalists will cover a number of topics that will make them better writers in their field. MWAG President Royal Titus says the workshop will lay the foundation for journalists to write for any other media, including television or radio. 
there is a dearth, an absence, a scarcity of writers. There are a lot of people in the media.